Hello everyone, my name is Megan Lavoda and I offer wisdom, tools, and support for personality integration. And today I'm going to be continuing on my series where I give each of the personality types a love letter. And today I'm going to be talking about the INFP, personality. So if you are new to personality type and perhaps you just test it as an INFP on an online test, I'm going to give you a brief overview of what the INFP personality type is all about before we get started. So first of all, the INFP is introverted, which means that they prioritize their subjective inner world over their outer external world. The INFP is also intuitive, which means that they perceive the world through abstract, abstract concepts rather than concrete physical facts. The INFP is also a feeler, and which means that they judge the world around them through their morals and their ethics rather than looking at the logical um, rather than making logical assumptions about things um they are also perceivers over uh, a judger which this means that they gather in new experiences rather than organizing them which means that your perceiving function is extroverted in nature. Um, you tend to be the sort of person that goes with the flow rather than someone that is constantly mentally prepared. And it also means, you being a P, that your way of judging, uh, the way that you judge is subjective in nature. So your dominant function is introverted feeling. You judge the world through your um, subjective uh, ethics and values. That is the main lens to which you see the world. And then you use your auxiliary function, which is extroverted intuition. You gather these intuitive abstract concepts around you in order to either process your personal introverted feeling or to help you um, understand the world around you in a more well-rounded way. Um, so what do I love about you, INFPs? Um, INFPs are some of my favorite types. Um, I, my best friend growing up in high school, uh, is an INFP. We have been friends for like over a decade now, and I know that we will be friends for life. And INFPs are those sort of friends. They're the sort of friends where once you're in your heart or once you are in their heart, um, you're never going to leave. And even if like, so for me as an ENFJ, I do relate a lot to INFPs because we both are feelers first. We feel and then we use our intuition to support our feeling. So I relate a lot to INFPs in that way. But the way that we express ourselves and our personality can be very different. And it can lead to um, misunderstandings that can feel very just stressful, especially since we're both feeler types. But at the end of the day, we are both bleeding hearts. We have strong emotional convictions and we use um, abstract concepts in order to support our feeling. So, and it's it's beautiful to get the chance to engage with an INFP when they do let you in because they tend to be very private. And for, especially from my perspective, as um, many would say that the ENFJ, the ENFJ is the shadow side to the INFP, and that is because our cognitive stacks, they go in the same order when uh, when you look at the functions, but opposite orientations. So whereas the INFP is FI, then NE, then SI, then TE, I, uh, my stack is FE, then uh, NI, then um, SE, and then TI. So the cognitive functions that are used by the INFP are completely different than mine, which this um, creates opportunity for growth within our relationship. So looking at an INFP is 
could feel like tapping into the, the depths of my shadow. And it really causes me to introspect. And it really causes me, it, it catalyzes me into growth. And that is a very important gift. INFPs have this way of, even without being pushy, just by nature of being around them in their presence, they have this way of encouraging you to consider what really matters to you and also um, encouraging you to surrender to the cyclical nature of the universe and mother nature. They know what they want and they almost surrender in hopes of miracles. They know how to create miracles. It's a lot different than how for me as an ENFJ, I have this vision and then I take action in order to make it happen. INFPs are just so graceful so almost dainty. Um, sorry if that's a weird word, especially for INFP men. A lot of them might feel weird about being called dainty, but it's like your heart is dainty. It's like fine china. It um, They have this graceful way of moving about the world and taking everything... Um, Kind of like you don't need to plan everything out. You can develop this trust that miracles could happen. You're aware of all of the possibilities that could happen. And so if you are down and out on your luck, something bad has happened, an INFP is a really wonderful person to talk to because they have this childlike wonder and hope to them. At their best, INFPs exude like hope and faith and they know how to follow their heart even when it's hard and that is really hard for a lot of people. Um, and I want you INFPs listening to know that even if you have not explicitly given advice or told your friends like you need to have hope or you need to blah blah blah. Like, your existence is inspiring. Um, INFPs tend to feel like they're in the shadows, like they're wallflowers. They're not one of the most um, common types. And that could be difficult for INFPs to sort of find their role in society and figure out what they want to do because the way that they operate... Um, is very individual. Um, no INFP, no two INFPs are the same. Every INFP is so their own person that it's almost difficult to even describe how one might look because they have certain things in common, but each INFP is going to express themselves as their own unique, ex unique expression. And INFPs are these fierce individualists and I love that. It's so inspiring to watch someone be so unabashedly themselves as though no one's looking because they really don't care if anyone's looking. They are not in it for power. They're not in it for control. They really do not care about power. That's another thing with them. Uh, they tend to be very humble. Um... INFPs, I, I love the way that you um, can hold space for people and hold space for their darkness. And you never invalidate anyone's emotion, no matter how illogical it might be. You know how to hold space for these emotions and treat them with care. And... Sometimes that might mean that you take a less active role in emotions, but I want you to know that I understand 
that your role is necessary. So I also have to say that during the time that I'm filming this, um, it is during the coronavirus um, lockdown uh, pandemic going on all across the world. And I just have to say that uh, INFPs are the ones who really, I think, could create um, the change that we want to see in the world. Um, I guess after this or through this because INFPs know how to go within and spend time alone and alchemize themselves by processing their emotions and it, it's magical um they know how to go within they know how exactly how um to they know how they're, I guess, if, if you think about each human being as like um, a machine, like what makes them tick, what helps them move, INFPs understand themselves on such a, such a deep level that they, this is their, this is their strength, the strength, this is their gift that they know how to navigate the world very smoothly, even in the worst scenarios where they might be experiencing a lot of pain beneath the surface, but they tend to not be afraid of that pain that they're experiencing because it's theirs. They are not afraid of their own um, darkness and their own um, like the unknowns within them if that makes sense and I think that a lot of people could learn from your example especially right now when I look around in the world um, people struggle uh, to go within themselves they struggle to get to know themselves INFPs understand that at the end of the day um all you really can count on is you. So INFPs know how to establish this sort of trusting and loving relationship within themselves. INFPs talk to themselves kindly. Um, they know how to do this more than other types. Um, like, even if you are feeling really down on yourself, you aren't going to have that same sort of inner critic that is tearing you apart logically the way that some TI users might have. Because INFPs know how to handle their own pain. It doesn't make it go away necessarily. I mean, the problem that INFPs do have is knowing how to make a decision that is going to solve a problem that is going to stop their pain from ever happening in the future um, and stop that cycle. But they know how to, I guess, see the beauty in their pain and they see the beauty in other people's pain and they know how to, with humility, accept people where they are. Um, I guess I just want to say don't, um, I know you, you guys have a lot of love to give and the way that you give it is going to be different than how I do as an ENFJ. So I want to just say go easy on yourself when it comes to like you do need perhaps more self-care than other types. You do perhaps need to create a life for yourself that is a little bit more low maintenance and a little bit um, more laid back than other types. And it might be very difficult for you to try and fit your ideal lifestyle in with, I guess, this system, you know, the corporate world, um, academia, whatever it is that you're going into. Um, you're perfectly capable of doing whatever it is that you set your mind to. But I hope that you can go easy on yourself and try and not compare other people's 
outcomes um, and other people's, um, I guess, strategies and ways to which they have built their life. Because INFPs, you guys have inferior extroverted thinking, which means that it can be difficult for you to, even though it's easy for you to feel for yourself and know what you are feeling aside from everyone else's, it can be difficult for you to think for yourself. Now, I'm not saying that you guys are sheep, you're anything but sheep, but it could be difficult for you if you're scrolling on Instagram and you're seeing someone started a new business or someone is doing a workout routine and someone's doing this and that. It could be difficult for INFPs to not go on there and be like, well, should I be doing that? Or should I be doing that? Like, and like maybe feel like a little lazy in comparison. And I just want to say to you guys that you're not lazy for being wired differently than other people. It's okay to live a slower life. It's okay to live a life where beauty and art are the number one things. Where your own self-care is number one. Um... And so if you're judging your results compared to other people's results, you just have to remember that we all are wired differently in our own way and um, other people's systems that they've created um, to get them where they want to go is going to be different than it is for you. And for you... Um, you cannot skip the step of self-love and self-care. Um, a lot of you guys probably already know this, but this is just a reminder in case some of you were um, f trying a little bit too hard to fit into the TE system. Uh, it's okay. Like, the way that you... I know that you naturally feel this desire to um listen to your heart in all moments like even something silly like if you're crazy if you're like craving a certain food at a certain time it could feel so painful for you to deny yourself what it is that you desire i just want to say that um your ability to listen to what you desire and take it seriously is what allows you to manifest miracles into your life and create the life you want. And INFPs tend to struggle with feeling shame around that area. Now, I know that that might sound contradictory because I did say that INFPs know how to handle their emotions pretty well. But shame seems to be a big thing that comes up that I've noticed from other INFPs where you might feel a little too slow, slow moving. You might feel like you have too many emotions or that you react kind of like a baby. And I use the word baby and I want to talk about that actually a little bit deeper is that when I say baby, I don't mean immature, but I do mean sensitive. And here's what I want you guys to think about, if you're willing, is that you have height, you have like a heightened thermometer in your heart when it comes to what you desire and what you don't desire. And you are like a baby in the sense that it is fresh, it is raw. It is, um, it's hypersensitive and that is interesting information. Your heart is giving you interesting information that you could use. And, um, I hope that you don't feel shame for that because other types, like let's take a look at ISTPs and INTPs who have introverted thinking as their first function, they might not they might not make as many like silly mistakes throughout the day as you do, or they might uh, be more efficient with their time than you. They also don't really know what they want or what matters to them. And 
INTP and ISTPs can waste time doing things that won't make them happy, doing things that they don't desire, wasting time on people that they think might give them something um, in return, but is not based on an intrinsic desire. And you INFPs do not waste your time on things that are not intrinsic desires very often. Like, and that allows you to conserve a lot of energy. Um, you guys do tend to be really great at setting those boundaries and conserve, conserving your energy and using it for things that you care about, like creating art. Um, I say art, but that really could mean anything. Anything that you create, you likely view it as an art form in its own right. Even if it's your relationships, you might view that through um, in an artistic way. I don't want you to feel shame, though, for who you are and for being so emotional because... Um, and it's hard when we live in a world where a lot of people have numbed that out. And to be honest, in order to get by in the current logical framework of society, um, which is kind of rigged, not really working for all the people, right? Um, you kind of have to numb yourself in order to get by and in order to get ahead. And the thing is, is that INFPs don't really numb themselves. But that's okay because you guys also know that you don't need to get ahead in order to be happy. So all those people that you see perhaps passing you up, making you feel lazy, making you feel less than, um, don't let them because they might be chasing things that don't they might be able to numb themselves in order to chase things, in order to get a reward, but they aren't happy at the end. They wasted their energy. And in order to numb your emotions to get something, it's never worth it. And you guys know what's worth it. And you guys don't numb yourself. And numbing your emotions are, is never worth it. So, um, I just would be aware to not victimize yourself along this process and realize that you're not alone. That's the big thing is that, um, as I said, um, no two INFPs are exactly alike because each INFP is their own unique person. However, you're not alone. You're not the only INFP that exists. There are several others out there that can relate to what you're going through. So please don't isolate yourself because the thing is, is that you guys understand your emotions at such a precise degree that it could be difficult for you to listen to and empathize with another uh, point of view and see the similarities. Um, you guys can get trapped in noticing the differences between you and others, which is, again, it could be a really good thing. Like for me, as an ENFJ, I tend to focus on the similarities because that's what I do to establish bonds. And in doing that, it could make me less aware of my own unique um, desires and wants. And so it's kind of this balance that you have to work on. Um, and I understand what you're going through when it comes to balancing it. I just am kind of coming at it from the other end. But um, like, be, just remember that if you feel really alone, it's because the way that you process your emotions or the way that you understand your emotions is so precise that is literally impossible for you to find someone who has is feeling the exact same thing as you because there's only one you. So the more you narrow it down to this precise level, the less likely you're going to find someone that relates. So you kind of have to zoom out a little bit, look at yourself and say, okay, I'm feeling stuck. I'm feeling lonely. I'm feeling confused. Kind of zoom out and take a look at some of these bigger emotions and it'll be so easy for you to find people that relate. And you can then use your NE, your auxiliary function, to sort of notice these patterns that are happening. So 
yeah, don't victimize yourself and isolate because we're here. People are out here who love you and value you and value what you have to offer. And no matter what it is that you do, I, I trust that you know in your heart what it is that is that gift that you wish to pursue, that you wish to give the world. There's this innate gift that you have and everybody has an innate gift, but INFPs tend to be more aware of what that gift is and what their main desire is. And the thing is, is that because you're so aware of it, that could be intimidating for you. But remember that other people aren't as aware of it as you. So it's like you hold the key to your desires. You know what you want and your desire and how intense it feels is paradoxically what holds you back from what you want is because it's so scary because you know just how much you want that thing and you know just how sad you'd be if you don't get that thing or that person or that experience or that feeling. Whereas just to put it all into perspective, other people don't know as much as you know what they want and what they desire. Therefore, it might be easier for them to take that, do things that seem risky because they don't really know how they're gonna feel when they get it or when they don't get it. So you can't really compare the risks that they're doing with what you're doing because for you, the journey really is, like everybody is trying to figure out what their innate gift is and uh, how to be happy, right? And it's like, because you know just what it is that you want and what your heart's telling you, and you also see all of the different possibilities of how things could go wrong, that's what makes it so daunting. But if you can reframe this and think of this as, I'm so grateful that I know what it is that my heart's telling me because that's the key. You could view that as the key and you can flip the script. And I believe in you and I see so much potential in INFPs. Um, you know, I'm the sort of person that is obsessed with maximizing my potential. And um, it can be frustrating to see people with such great potential that don't know that they have it. Now, I'm not saying this to be a pushy ENFJ and tell you what to do, but I am saying this as someone who sees your potential and who cares. No matter what your gift is, I know that you have the key to achieving your dreams. And I, I know and I see it. And I see that, I mean, as an ENFJ, as someone who is always studying <laughs> how to be happy, how social groups can work better together. And it's like, I know how important and how potent understanding your FI is. And I, I guess I just have to say that I have empathy for you for this process that you're going through, which is um, listening to your heart and also having the courage to, you know, live by it, you know. It's not enough sometimes for you guys to just listen to your heart. You also have to align your life um, in a way that is in harmony with your heart and what it's telling you to do. And I believe in you. So yes, um, that I think is really the main message that I wanna get across in this uh, video. Thank you INFPs for being so loving, for being such a guiding light uh, for others in your life. I don't know if you guys even realize that you are, you're doing that because you're so focused on yourself, but it's your energy and your essence, the way you're constantly purifying your heart. Um, it's magical for people to witness. And um, we're all grateful for you, INFP, and we all are supporting you and want you to succeed. And I know that the world would be a lot better place if there were more INFPs um, making the decisions uh, around here. So thank you, INFP. If you um, like videos like this, subscribe to my channel. Um, let me know if you have any other questions about INFPs or any other video suggestions. And 
Also, if you have been studying personality type for a while and are interested in taking your understanding to the next level and really using this information to heal both personally and interpersonally, I have launched a membership group that is $33 a month. The information is below. It comes with a Q&A every month, a facilitated uh, workshop conversation um, that is geared toward integrating your personality to live more as your highest self. All of that information is below. I also offer typing services. Um, yeah, and I also have a free Facebook group called Personality Typology for Self-Growth. If you are new and just want to meet more people in the personality community and get to know this information on a deeper level. So thank you so much and have a wonderful rest of your day.